Good morning, my name is Caroline Thomas. I'm a senior lecturer in education at Canterbury Christchurch University. I specialise in primary science education and I'm a researcher for a project called the Beginner Teacher in the Science and Religion Encounter. This is a project being undertaken by the National Institute for Christian Education Research at Canterbury Christchurch University. It is funded by the Templeton World Charity Foundation. The title of my presentation today is It's Not Something I Would Have Considered Primary Trainee Teachers' Perspectives on Science Religion Encounters in the Primary Classroom. My presentation falls into two parts. In the first part, I aim to share some of the findings from the research investigating primary student teachers' experiences of planning for and teaching science and religion encounters in the primary classroom. We consider that a science religion encounter is an encounter where teachers bring science into a religious education session or religion into a science session. This can be pre-planned or might arise accidentally whilst teaching. For example, students handling questions that children ask about religion, science or big questions that cannot be addressed by science and religion alone. In the second part of my presentation, I reflect on my own teaching experience as a tutor at the university and share some of the pedagogical approaches I am piloting with student teachers so that they can begin to plan for and explore science and religion encounters in the primary classroom. I then wish to open the discussion up and invite conference delegates to think about how student teachers can be best prepared to plan for and manage the encounters between science and religion in the primary classroom. The methodology. The research findings I share are based on six focus groups. These were undertaken either face to face or online as part of a much bigger project involving 17 focus groups with both primary and secondary student teachers across six universities in England. During the focus groups, we asked both students near the beginning and near completion of their programmes questions about their experiences of science and religion encounters. Examples of questions included what they thought the purposes of science and religious education were, any anxieties they might have experienced or challenged, or the challenges they might face when they plan for, teach and manage science and religion encounters. The research was underpinned by a strong ethical framework using the BIRA guidelines. We undertook thematic analysis of the data and used the findings to construct a questionnaire to gain a thousand student and early careers teachers perspectives on science religious encounters in the classroom. This survey has since been completed and was launched nationally in April 2021. This slide is about the experiences of students um, in relation to the research findings. One of the most interesting findings was that until the student teachers actually came to the focus group, the majority indicated that they'd never thought about including science in an RE lesson or religion in a science lesson. Very stu few students had ever observed any science religious encounters being taught or managed by class teachers whilst in placement schools. We had comments like, I can't say I've ever thought about it. To be honest, it's never come up in my thoughts. It's not something I would have considered. I've never seen it happen. And science and religion were taught separately on my placement. A few students mentioned observing or dealing with it, spontaneous encounters that arose during lessons. An interesting example given by a student in a year one class was a young child asking the question, who came first, the dinosaurs or God? Typically, students admitting feeling uncertain about how to respond to these questions. 
which influenced their confidence to manage science and religion encounters. In terms of their experiences of the university tuition, a few student teachers gave examples of tutors seeking to promote cross-disciplinary approaches to learning, but indicated that science was rarely put together with religious education in their sessions. A barrier was that these subjects were normally taught in separate subject silos. They indicated that tutors or they themselves tended to opt not to consider science and religion together, as this was viewed to be more complex than exploring the relationships between other disciplines. I now look at some of the anxieties that student teachers may have experienced about engaging with science and religion encounters. An important issue that arose was that student teachers strongly perceived the need to fit into the school and experience that sense of belonging. They indicated the desire to follow the school's ethos in terms of its values and classroom practices. Students appeared eager to demonstrate compliance to school pedagogical practices and appeared to look for clues when observing their teachers teach to make sense of the expectations that would be placed on them. They appeared eager to follow class teachers or mentors ways of doing things, particularly when handling matters related to religion and school pupils beliefs. Students expressed concerns about causing any offence to staff and pupils and becoming the source of complaints that might arise from parents. And they believe that their class teachers or their mentors might be asked to deal with this. This type of feeling is evident in this final year BA students comments. It's something I feel quite nervous to do. I'd be scared that I was going to say the wrong thing, especially when the school is quite influenced by the church. And then maybe you don't want to say things and maybe the families would disagree with this. Interestingly, there are contrasting views about whether it would be more challenging to plan and teach science linked to religion in church schools or in community schools without a religious foundation. In schools with a religious foundation, student teachers appear concerned about them imposing their own faith positions on children. They considered it important not to do this and that children should have the freedom required to develop their own faith position. They also perceive that it was important to use the correct language when discussing aspects of faith. This required advanced preparation and subject knowledge. On this side, I think of some of the challenges or barriers that student teachers um, raised about engaging with science and religion encounters. Student teachers perceived they were challenged to master the level of subject knowledge required to deliver the whole primary curriculum to the expected standard. They suggested that they needed the personal confidence, time and space to experiment with planning and implementing science and religion encounters. Students cited the importance placed on English and the mathematics curriculum and the pressures associated with assessment of pupil achievement in these subjects, which meant that they needed to prioritise getting to grips with the teaching and learning of English and mathematics as their central priority. There was a general perception among students that science and religious education were underplayed as subjects in the primary curriculum in placement schools. And if more, more importance was given to both science and RE in the curriculum, then teachers generally may be more open and willing to plan and address science and religion encounters. One student called the science and RE as the missing subjects in the curriculum, which was rather sad. Very few had ever observed religious education being taught and indicated this was a significant barrier to the development of their pedagogical content knowledge. 
Students held different views about children's ages being a barrier to them putting science and religion together in a lesson. Some students indicated that it was far too complicated to try and get primary children to think about science and religion together and to reflect on the relationship between science and religion. For example, a PGCE student quoted, I can feel that it's easier to have a black and white style of, of, of telling what happened rather than adding complexity, adding a moral greyness. The perceived complexity of the relationship between science and religion might make it challenging for student teachers to explore this with children at this stage of their teaching career. Interestingly, however, some students based in the early years foundation stage perceive that if children had more structured time for discussion during the school day, they might be interested in exploring big questions that cross science and religion boundaries. The findings highlighted issues with students knowing where to go to for support and advice on teaching science and religion encounters and them lacking knowledge on useful curriculum planning resources. Interestingly, mentors were rarely mentioned as sources of support and when prompted about whether students went to mentors, they indicated the need to please their mentors for assessment purposes. This raised questions about students' need to critique teaching and learning practices and how the desire to conform might impact on their willingness or security to take risks when planning for and managing science and religion encounters. As part of the research, we analyse the perceptions of students' relationships between science and religion. Um, we use Barber's 2000 fourfold fourfold typology for explaining perceptions of the relationships that can exist between science and religion. Barber discussed how science and religion can be in conflict, can have independence, can be in dialogue or can be integrated. The findings indicated that many students tended to view the relationship between science and religion as uncomfortable, contrasting or being antagonistic towards each area. Perceptions of this uncomfortable or antagonistic or even having grey areas may have left some students feeling out of their depth in exploring the nature of the science religion relationship with children. The dominant assumption that science and religion were antagonistic towards each other rather than being in dialogue tended to echo the view in popular culture an existing body of research on the ways that majority of school children can think about this relationship. Most of the research to date has been done on secondary school children's views about the relationship between science and religion. These findings from this research help to plug a gap in student teachers' views. Questions arose about the origins of student teachers' views. We did find that student teachers generally tended to lack the capacity to clearly articulate both the nature and purposes of religious education and science education, and that they gained their subject knowledge about religion when unsure from varying sources. These included their parents. We did have um, many examples of what students would like to do. Through participating in the focus groups and challenging students to even consider science and religion encounters, we found rich examples of students wanting to explore these with pupils. The interview experience helped open students' eyes to the possibilities of putting science and religion together in lessons and schemes of work. Examples of what they wanted to do often included enabling pupils to investigate the relationship between the Big Bang theory and the creation narrative. Interestingly, rather than just using the Christian re uh, creation narrative, an exploration of sensitive issues through the lens of Christianity, 
students tended to want to promote diversity and enable children to explore such narratives from different religious viewpoints. Other students expressed the need to explore sensitive issues that arose from primary children's everyday experiences, such as the issue of death. For example, one student indicated that death could be explored from a religious perspective in terms of rituals, celebratory aspects, and what happens to the soul after death, as well as looking at this from a scientific point of view. We came across limited examples of students starting to explore the relationships between science and religion with pupils using big questions, which cross disciplinary boundaries. I have included an example of a quotation here from a PGCE student engaged in planning a classroom-based research project he was undertaking to investigate children's understanding of the relationship between science and religion. He investigated with children how humans share the earth with animals. He introduced children to the notion of us being caretakers or custodians of the earth as a religious dimension to his project, which fitted well with sustainability issues he covered in science. The need for humans to reduce, reuse and recycle rubbish as a means of humans sharing the planet with animals. So, what can facilitate engagement with science and religious encounters? Overall, from the students' perspectives, they indicated the need to feel well prepared to plan for and manage science and religious encounters. The major challenge was developing their confidence and competence to deal with aspects of differing religious beliefs amongst pupils in the classroom. They expressed anxieties about managing the types of questions children asked related to religious matters. To overcome their anxieties and build their confidence, they perceived the need to feel well prepared to teach RE. Students indicated that more time on initial teacher education programmes would be beneficial to enable them to deal with sensitive issues and the difficult questions that children ask more time and opportunity to observe the teaching of religious education became paramount. They wanted guidance on the kind of language to use when talking about matters related to religion so as not to cause offence either to their schools, their teachers or their parents. The findings from our research implies that students need more opportunities to explore the nature of the dialogue that exists between science and religion and explore their views on this. They also need opportunities to think about how science and religion can come together to help them explore big questions about the existence of life, about the origins of the universe and what it means to be alive and be a person. There is a need for resources to help model how teachers can bring these two aspects together in the classroom. In the pilot focus groups, a researcher on the project produced some video footage of teachers bringing science and religion together in a lesson. This was received positively by students and stimulated their thinking about how they might be able to do this. In the next part of the presentation, I share examples of my work as a tutor in supporting student teachers to begin to explore the relationship between science and religion in the primary classroom. I specialise in primary science education and am part of a team of tutors who has introduced aspects of epistemic insight into taught modules at Canterbury Christchurch University. Billingsley et al 2018 defined epistemic insight as knowledge about knowledge and devised this draft curriculum framework which runs through the primary and secondary school to promote children's understanding of how knowledge is formed and what makes disciplines distinctive in terms of their methods, processes and norms of thought. This framework has three components. I have used this with students to help them think about the distinctive nature of science and religion and how science and religion might differ in the types of questions that they ask and to reflect on whether there's any common ground between the two. 
At the university, we've been devising and researching the use of pedagogical tools for exploring big questions that cross disciplinary boundaries. These are available and can be accessed along with example curriculum resources on our epistemicinsight.com website. On this slide, I include two examples of two pedagogical tools that I have modelled to student teachers in my science sessions. They can use them to explore the relationship between science and religion. The first is the discipline wheel. I've used this successfully with both Key Stage 2 primary school children and with student teachers to explore big questions, such as the question, we are, are we what we eat? And this will invite students and children to put on different discipline hats and to think about how different areas might address this question through the different disciplinary lenses. We define a big question as one that can't be addressed by a single discipline and requires multidisciplinary perspectives to get a rich and in-depth answer. I challenge the students to think about the nature of human personhood. Are we really what we eat or is there more to this than just the food we eat? We begin by thinking about the contributions science might make to answering this question. They can think about diet and what goes into our bodies, nutrition and how this might affect our health and our well-being. Students can then explore from a psychology perspective how who we are has something to do with our personality or our behaviour. Then we start to explore the contribution religion can make to us addressing the question. For example, we can start to think about the nature of the soul and human spirit and how certain foods that we eat help us define our religious identity and how our religious identity might help us define who we are as a person. Certain foods we eat may be associated with religious rituals we engage in, such as wine and bread in Christianity. The foods we eat might be important to us and our lives. Our attitudes to food may provide insights into our values and our morals and perhaps how we feel about how animals are used in foods. The different perspectives give us a rich response to the question. I then zoom down to a precise small question that can be answered by scientific observation. I use this tool called the bubble tool um, to get students to think about which questions are more amenable to science than other questions. Are they partly amenable, totally amenable, or are there different types of questions that might need to be answered by different disciplines? I use the question, what happens to cereal inside our body? So the students engage in making models of the digestive system and practically explore how cereal is digested. They also explore the use of technology in the form of micro cameras that can be swallowed and passed through the digestive system and provide us with unique observations of the digestive system at work as food passes through the body. Students can reflect on the contribution science makes to addressing the question and its limitations and look at the kind of questions that science asks. I also run research modules which enable students to research children's responses to big questions, which includes the nature of science in real world context and multidisciplinary arenas. This slide is an example of a year one child's responses to a research project undertaken by one of my PGCE students. Explore how student humans can share the planet. He undertook two lessons in the classroom, one from a more religious perspective, thinking about us being custodians for the planet and another to do with recycling and the reuse of materials from a science perspective. He got the children to draw posters and to think about how they might share the planet. He then started to have conversations with the children about whether they thought they were answering a science question, a religious question or both. As tutors, we are being beginning to build into modules opportunities for students to explore how they might investigate big questions which bridge one or more discipline in schools and implement this doing exciting work with children. We are starting to research how they are getting on with this. I really like to finish my presentation by highlighting the link to the NICER survey to explore 
uh, encounters of science and religion in the classroom. Anyone can participate. If you would like to participate, please use this link on the slide. If you would like more information about our project, you can go to our NICER website, which is the National Institute for Christian Education and Research .org .uk. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I'm happy to answer questions on anything I've spoken about and have included some potential questions for discussion. I will be interested in how we can best prepare student teachers for dealing with the challenges of science and religious encounters and responding to the sensitive issues that arise in a classroom context. I'm also interested in finding out if anyone else is doing work in this area in helping students to think about how disciplines can work uh, together, their relationship and how knowledge is actually formed. My final slide include references to my presentation. Thank you.